shouldn't be able to move that. Say you have a guest here and you lock it from the outside, they'll be locked in yeah. until you get back. Manny Pacquiao uses it to warm up with. How? Like, it fell on my head when it clamped or something. Okay, because it comes straight out. For the first time, freshman housing was not enough to hold the growing population of students. Freshmen who are oftentimes required to live on campus were forced to invade upperclassmen housing leaving upperclassmen with even fewer housing options both on and off campus, thus creating a situation where there were seemingly more students than the university could house, leading to the proposed creation of Panther Hill. Um, so, and we're isolated. So Prairie is far from Houston, far enough from Cyprus, and so development's not just happening left and right. Some people actually like are without a place to stay. Some people like end up not, uh, continuing their enrollment and they just like stay at the crib. I used to work in housing and I got many a sad story from a parent. It's like, you know, I used to go to PV, it's not supposed to be like this, and I didn't have any rooms to give them, right? That snowballs into a greater issue where um, our mayor goes you know, around campus uh, marketing this, you know, great savior to the, to the solution. He gave speeches at City Hall saying that he recognized the problem, that some of the solutions were poor housing. That's true, I used to live in a place that's pretty bad. I didn't like it, I moved out. Uh, they didn't, you know, treat the residents uh, as, as they should be treated. And so there's Panther Hill now, a new development, um, a rush development. But yeah, so what, what happens when you have so many people, and then, by, by the way, the uni universities, without increasing their investments, or without the system increasing their investments in, in building housing, we have increased our enrollment standards, right? So we have to enroll more people, but we have not been appropriated the amount of money to build more houses falls into really a city issue is that we have an underdeveloped city. However, the main engine of Prairie View is of course Prairie View University. And us being under the ANM system, under certain um, guidelines from Texas, that we are um, mandated or policy to increase enrollment. And so with the increase in enrollment, by the same time an underdeveloped city, to where if I had a, a, a school in Houston, if I'm at U of H or TSU, and somebody told me that I need to increase enrollment, Y'all may have actual on campus at housing at TSU or U of H, but I have a whole city around me. So the problem isn't isn't that large per se. But in Prairie View, I have a I have a city that's underdeveloped, not a lot of housing out here. I have a university that is steadily increasing enrollment, except the more freshmen. And so there you have a, a problem in the class. It's very disrespectful to come onto Prairie View A&M University's campus, talk to students about housing, and like blow it out of proportion, make students believe in something that's not really thought through properly. Like you should really think about what you're doing to the students and think about how much money they're spending just to be here. And if you calculate all that together, you're disrespecting them, you're disrespecting their parents, and you really have no respect for the university, in my opinion. With no other housing options available, and it being so close to the start of the fall semester, they reluctantly moved in. So I can only go off of what I've seen on social media, and um, I have a personal friend who is also a Panther Hill resident, and what I've seen on social media is really ridiculous. I've seen people's roofs falling down, like their shower um, heads are faced the wrong way, um, the and personally, my friend was dealing with her housing, like the the way they they have housing set up. There's like a two bedroom and a four bedroom, and she's in a two bedroom. Her rooms are smaller than um, the four bedroom, which doesn't make sense. So the floor pans are all messed up. It's a lot going on. People are getting like holes in their tires from the construction going around. Uh, one girl on social media said that the um, the people working on the buildings were like stealing out of their cars. I don't know. The validity of these statements, but I'm going off of you know uh, what I've been seeing on social media, what I've been hearing word from mouth. But it's just it's all a mess, and uh, something needs to be done. Thing is, different sizes of the rooms. We have one room that is the size of another room times three. So you have room C that's probably about this big, but then you have room A that's about this big. Another situation was one of my friends didn't have a drain in his shower. Another young lady had some type of septic coming out of her shower. And I believe the biggest issue is the lack of consideration for the students 
and also the dragging of the feet. When I went out there, some of the maintenance men were playing with fishing poles when students had complaints. Right now, the city doesn't have an attorney because he was on. So right now, we're, we're getting an interim attorney, but the thing is, and this is kind of... I don't like him. It's a, it's a, it's a little, look, who? Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas. That's three hours away. Um, my original move-in date was August 16, 2018. Um, they emailed me maybe a day or two before then saying that I wasn't able to move in. So I had to stay with one of my friends and she lived pretty deep in Cyprus. It's about 30 minutes from school. So I had to move all of my apartment stuff to her apartment and let it sit. I was sleeping on an air mattress in her apartment, commuted to school for a couple of days until me and my roommate um, had to pay out of pocket for a hotel for two weeks, which turned out to be $400. On top of commuting back and forth to school, with gas, I'm not employed, I do not have a job, I did not have my refund. So at the time, it was really hard for me to um, buy my books as well. So it was a lot of stress, because that's pretty much like an hour every day, 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back. So um, I finally moved in September 6th, and I didn't get an email about moving in. I just assumed, word them out through other tenants to move in. Uh, when I, The day I moved in, the apartment was really dirty. We don't have Wi-Fi or um, reliable Wi-Fi. So it's really hard to keep up with assignment deadlines like for school and stuff. Uh, electricity goes out sometimes. My shower is faced the opposite way. So every time I take a shower, water like floods my bathroom floor. Um, also the weather strip on the bottom of our front door, there's like a gap between the door and the weather strip so bugs are constantly coming in. We don't have a peephole in our door. Our locks lock from the inside so it's difficult getting in and out and we don't have any of our amenities. We don't have Wi-Fi, cable, our pool, fitness center, the clubhouse, the parking lot is still dirt so some people have like nails in their tires or the water leaks, so I'm always having to wash my bath mats. Um, it sprays on the wall, so that lets like mold, mildew grow on it. And then those are probably the everyday issues, but every week I would say something new breaks in my house. I've been having problems with miscommunication, and as far as going towards my room problems, I have a leak in my bathroom that occurs almost every week like once or twice every week coming from my ceiling. I reported it five times. I saw a roll of nails from a nail gun sitting on top of somebody's window. It's still there to this day. And it's like a whole week later today. So that's kind of a hazard. And I called, I actually went in there and I told them that. So I'm waiting for them to come pick that up. I don't know when they're gonna do that. Everywhere, the floor was dirty. My bedroom light did not work. My roommate's toilet did not work. It was not connected or hooked up, so she had to use my bathroom. Um, but outside of that, it wasn't too many problems. Parking was terrible. There was hardly anywhere to park. A lot of people were getting nails in, in their tires, and the apartments was not compensating them for getting new tires. Um, a lot of the construction workers took up a lot of parking for students and tenants as well. Um, trash, trash overflowed throughout the whole apartment complex weekly. It was filled up. People started just putting trash in their hallways. And CAs, we didn't know we had CAs. CAs were trying to find, threatened to find the whole building, 150 each, because they had nowhere to put their trash. So um, that was my first week and a half uh, living at Panther Hill. Um, and then further on, I ran into more issues with feces and sewage water coming up my shower drain. I actually didn't end up moving in until August 30th. So I was I moved in after classes had already started. So. Did they accommodate you at all for not moving in on your lease date? Not not to my knowledge. I haven't really seen any accommodation. So other people as well as trying to work with us to keep us informed. But Panther Hill in itself has not been keeping its tenants informed. So it, it's just really like, it's kind of scary because it's like, you know, as the semester progresses, it's like a living nightmare. I can't get out of this lease because they don't want to give me my money back. They don't want to break the lease in order for me to go live somewhere else on campus, hypothetically next semester or somewhere else off campus. So 
it's it's like a living nightmare for us and a lot of people still haven't paid their rent and i paid mine so i mean that's that's really all i have to say it would have been much it would have been a great experience to live with them as they built well not as they built but after they built after construction was completely done and got a full experience of a better housing because it was supposed to be a nice complex it's it's nice it's a nice setup but the construction is not great as to how it should be set up. Everything is not together correctly. Stuff is over here and over there. It's not organized. People have different size appliances. Um, room sizes are completely off scale. Um, flooring plan, floor plans weren't actually what we received. It was completely different from the images they have online. And to change amenities after you had already assigned them is completely wrong. In my opinion, it's not a livable size. It's very small. Um, it's hard to believe that they want us to pay the same amount of money to live here that we live in the phases when we don't have half the amenities that the phases gives us. For one bedroom, it's anywhere from 850 to 800, I believe. For a two bedroom, it's anywhere between 250 no, seven fifty to seven hundred because I pay seven hundred dollars a month. Um, and I think the four bedroom is like six hundred to six fifty. And anything in but there's probably like prices in between, but I think the lowest is six hundred and the highest is probably eight fifty to nine hundred. Some of the things I would like to see change at Panther Hill is that um, I'm hoping that we get all of our amenities soon and that they reimbursed us for our problems that we had to deal with while living there. I hope they changed my shower, our front door, and management. I think we need new management.